ready for round two. So, welcome back, one and all. You ready for round two? My body is ready. <laughs> what do you mean your body's ready? What the fuck was that? My body is ready. Oh, that is all God. I have to say. Yeah, so, yeah, you still are wearing that crown, you son of a bitch. Am I? I thought that was just something that was on loan. Uh, no, you, you won the crown last time, because, um, last, the first round that we had, we fought against, um, the whole whether Monster Monterey Bay was actually a good episode or not. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah that's you, right. You won that fight, so, there you All go. Alright. Yeah, okay. Now it's time for round two, like we both agreed on last year. Which is the scarier episode? And I think everyone and their mother has already predicted uh, who has picked what for their side. I have been skulking on your channel just to see how that poll has been going. I also have rewatched both episodes just to kind of get a vibe, mainly because I don't like making argument just like based on nothing. I like to have some understanding of my argument. All right, cool. It. So, all right. So both of us are like on the same page where we both like looked at the poll, clearly seen that Wendigo is somehow fucking winning. I don't know why my YouTube community is like Wendigo scarier. I don't get it. Because your community is right. <sighs> my God. Or my community is basically simping over you because you have the crown right now. Who knows? I severely doubt it. I 100% doubt that. All right, but but all that besides, because that is going to be like the layer point of the episode, which determines who gets the crown. Uh, we're still going to discuss our our bits, I think. Okay. But at least we're both up to speed as to yeah, we watched the episode, so we're we're in the clear. 100%. Uh, right. Would you like to start? I, I know that Vampire's from Season 2, so, like, if you want to take the... I, fi that. I figured since you have the crown, I figured let's start with you. Let's okay. get Wendigo right out of the bat. Okay, so my argument kind of comes down to a couple of things. Um, first and foremost, regarding the Wendigo episode itself, I think the environment is a big factor like, the whole episode pretty much takes place in the same woods the whole time. Uh, something I noticed with Vampire is it has that opening with, like, that gas station attack, which I'm not yeah. sure if you caught this when rewatching, but, like, Food Mart is something I can't take seriously. I'm not sure if you noticed that. <laughs> but when I saw that, I'm just like... It's probably a 76 gas station is what was being used, so... Well, yeah, it, it was just called Food Mart, though, and I'm like, ah, yes, I also get all my gas and food at Food Mart. But <laughs> despite that, I do, I do respect the location of a house. I, I can respect that. Like, a, enough Lost Tapes episodes have done something like that. Mm -hmm. But I think the woods just have a better ambiance and a better sense of, like fear because you can realistically get lost in those right um my other big thing is wendigo has this overwhelming sense of dread that starts the minute that like found evidence for like the episode itself starts mm -hmm. um i did note in vampire there are specifically two to three moments that three moments that have that same level of dread. The first one is when the kid is just screwing around with the camera and he looks down that one shaft and he sees his ripped up toy there. We're expecting a jump scare, but they just give us something that's like, oh, here's a result of something. Cool. Um, the other two times are the first entry into the basement followed by the pest control guy just kind of like moving the camera around up until mm -hmm. we actually see the vampire very suspenseful and very good design for the nest that's a very unique design yes and vampire overall is a very unique take on vampires mm -hmm. and the other being the obvious the kid running up the stairs that is <gasps> very smart oh, very dude. smart horror for a kid but something I noticed on Discord, I, I think it was uh, Canada that pointed it out or somebody pointed it out mm -hmm. that's something from a kid's perspective I can understand how a lot of your audience might have voted Wendigo because Wendigo has a more 
adult angle to it. The fear of being lost in the woods and being cannibalized. Mm. Me personally, I think cannibalism is incredibly terrifying. The notion of being eaten alive or dead, but preferably, like, for the alive. sake of fear, alive. Yeah. That's horrifying and something that you don't need to have, like, a monster do. Humans can just do that. The whole well, essence I, I, of... No, yeah. no, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I mean, a lot of animals, like, do that. Like, they do cannibalize on one another. And sometimes they just infanticize, which is basically just kill off offspring before they're even born. Because, yes, nature's a bitch like that. But oh, totally. But human, like, when another human cannibalizes on another person, that's when it, it's, like, really fucked up. I, I exactly. agree with you on that. It gets into this idea of, like, psychological horror, which is something that I know we're, we're talking about Lost Tapes, and, like, that's not, that's getting, like, super deep. I might seem pompous when I'm saying that, but, like, that's something that I think should be rewarded when a show like this actively engages in that. Right. The other big selling point for Wendigo for me is when the last two park rangers get attacked, specifically the last female park ranger, where she's investigating the dead body, the camera's up in the tree, and that spinning continuous shot as we slowly see the Wendigo come into frame and then take her out. That is such a genius, like, yeah, that method is a really of shooting. Cool shot. That is a really neat, like, camera. That is that one of the most artistic ways I think found footage has done something like that. And I'd like to see more found footage take those abstract approaches. Yeah. But those three moments in Vampire where, like, it feels like that suspense. I feel like that's permeated through the entire runtime of Wendigo. There's never a point, point where I feel Wendigo is ridiculous, whereas there are definitely some points in Vampire where I'm like, oh, oh my god, how, how stupid is that? Uh, the Food Mart thing, um, the, the way that the parents act, I noticed on a most recent rewatch, it's like, mm -hmm. hey, you set up a camera in your kid's room and you didn't bother to check it when he was screaming bloody murder. Oh, you didn't think God. in the morning. Yeah, like... that was like one of the biggest things while we were rewatching the episode is that um, Ginger King pointed that out. And I'm like, yeah, that was dumb. Considering that the fact that they set up the camera in the room because he has like those night terrors or he sleeps, he's sleepwalking at night. So it doesn't make any sense why they would not check the recording. Bare minimum for the sake of like, oh, we're worried about our kid like sleepwalking. Mm. We should check to see if he did that anytime beforehand. And like, it, it seems like the whole camera subplot gets kind of dropped. Another thing I noticed that got dropped was um the movement of the door just by itself. Okay. Like, you don't think at any point the kid could, like, look at that camera and then just be like, hey, mom and dad, look at this thing I found on grandma's camera that I just kind of set there. This is weird. There are moments like that that take me out of it that I don't get that with Windigo. Windigo feels like it comes across as logical as, like, a found footage, like, 20-minute horror show can give you. Okay. Like, there's never a moment where I'm like, oh, that seems ridiculous. Does Wendigo rely a bit more on jump scares? I definitely can acknowledge that. But I think those jump scares work because they're trying their best to indicate that the Wendigo just pops up wherever. They say that in one of the uh, scientific points of like, oh, yeah, it can just appear wherever. You can't hide from this thing. So the notion of it just not being there, then boom, it's there. I think that weirdly works. Hmm. Um, to wrap up my whole synopsis okay i think wendigo just better emulates the full experience of horror whereas vampire only gets certain segments of horror so that's my that's my so i'm trying to understand like what you're trying to say for your episode like so it does psychological horror it has yep. a real unique camera style it's basically uh consistent with its environment Yep. Um, a very unique monster in and of itself. Uh, something that I know Lost Tapes would try to do unique monsters with in Season 3, and that rarely worked out. Right. I think Wendigo is the exception there. Mm -hmm. um, very high body count. Very warranted body count, all things considered. And overall, out of every episode, I think it genuinely comes off as the scariest. I think it has the best environment for it. The best types of angles and shots to convey the horror. And just overall, a really good monster to utilize that horror, as well as a concept. Yeah, especially, consider, especially considering when it's like a 
realistic, like, psychological disorder, too. Exactly. So, those are my big takeaways. Am I, is there anything still confusing on that? No, no, I just wanted to clarify, so when I put the, put it down on the notes on the side, so I just get the points right. Uh, oh, cool, cool, cool. Um, okay, so for me, um, oh my gosh. I just want to say, the minute the episode starts rolling, like, once we get at rid of the, like, the whole, like, you know, viewer discretion is the, uh, advice thing, it just non-stop does not stop the, uh, the horror aspect of a vampire. It, like, the music gives, like, this tension, um, sense all throughout. And especially during moments where the vampire is on screen and you're building up that tension, it's silent. It's very, like, ominous. It just lets the, let the whole scene play out with no, with no music to back it up. Uh, whereas every time the Wendigo kind of appears, there's always like this dramatic sound effect that comes in and just blasts you in the face because yeah, it's obviously uh, a jump scare every time the Wendigo does show up in that episode. Um, agreed, agreed. Um, may I make a counterpoint on this? Yes. In Wendigo, at least when it pops up, I can see the Wendigo mask or at the bare minimum, I can see its body. Mm -hmm. Vampire has this problem where it's very shaky, especially near the end, which obviously the kids are running. Mm -hmm. And they're running away from the thing that's coming up the stairs. But they hardly show off, which I, I will admit, really great vampire costumes. And they yeah. don't show them off enough. They really don't. Yeah, but that's the thing with, like, the older seasons is that they were more or less, like, building up to the monster and then finally, like, showing it uh, right towards the end. Whereas season three has been just more open with their monsters and are not afraid to physically show them off. And it's like, you know, it detriments it a lot in season three, but I think in Oops. season two with Vampire, it works extremely well. And then especially with your case, the Wendigo, it works. It's justified for um, that episode. I, I do see your point about the music, and, I, and to an extent, I do agree with you. Mm -hmm. I think Vampire's build up works when they're in the house. I, again, cannot take that gas station attack seriously. I think it's incredibly unrelevant to the story and unrelevant yeah. to the overall fear of it. Uh, continue. Yeah, but basically just the noises, the fact that you're not seeing it, you're more or less hearing it and just visually just going like, the again, those horror aspects, especially with um, Ruggles, like the kid looking down and seeing the ripped up Ruggles. Like he gets that is a spooked. very good scene. Like he gets spooked in that scene, but you don't see what he sees on the camera. Like Which right is, towards again, the end, he's very looking down the shaft. He's still looking at the ripped up bear. And then it gets spooked, and you don't see what what's going on. Which I think is just terrifying to think. Like, oh god, what the hell did the kid get scared by in that scene? And then especially the fucking basement scene. Oh my god. Just I I will definitely agree that is a very well constructed. Scene. Oh my god! The fact that the thing is down there, the dad tells him, "Okay, go down there because the exterminator has not left yet," and it's just like he goes down there, doesn't even notice that the exterminator is like lying on the floor in front of him dead. Then the arm comes up, and you can see the va the other vampire coming in from behind on his snake cam. Just fucking terrifying. And then he manages to get out and then run up the stairs as like, holy fucking shit. Oh my Something god. Something I will note, and I will admit this is probably me like shitting on the episode right here, which I don't like doing. Mm -hmm. Um how a kid was able to outrun and get past like two or three of those things when a grown ass man can't do it. I could see an argument, but it definitely does take me almost out of the moment. It, yeah, it that does for the take me a that... little bit out of it, but I'm like, holy fucking shit. It's just like, at that moment, I feel like I just don't care anymore. I'm just like, let it, let him run. Just get him out of there. Like, oh my fucking god, dude. <laughs> Damn. Um, and then the one base, uh, not the basement scene, the um, the bedroom scene at night. Where the vampire then comes crawling in, and you see him, like, holding onto the end of the bed, just waiting to make sure the kid's fully asleep. And then he grabs Ruggles right towards the end, and the kid screams. is very reminiscent to Poltergeist a little bit. 
Oh, but just wait. well uh, done. But just done better. I think one thing that comes to mind now that I'm thinking about that scene, because I was more critical of the security camera aspect, but something I didn't think about what's stopping it from just pouncing on the kid. They clearly will just like attack a guy who is fully awake and realistically had something to defend himself. It wasn't like anything better than a blunt weapon, but I don't what? know what was stopping it at that point. <laughs> I have no clue. I think, honestly, it's just the fact that maybe the vampires themselves have never encountered a child before, and this is, like, their first time dealing with, a, like, a, you know, a child for once. I mean, you have to admit adult. that would be a stretch, though. I mean, that is a bit of a stretch, but I'm just saying, like, it does have that aspect to it. Um, but then, I, I don't mean to be shitting on fucking Wendigo, I really don't. Oh, like, no, like, we're we're equally shitting on stuff here. Let's I know, let the but, shit flow, my dude. Okay, so I'm gonna get to shitting on Wendigo here. Let's be clear, I think the better storyline uh, for the Wendigo episode would have been that recovered footage part of it. Where you saw Ooh. Matthew become slowly, like, um, turning into that cannibalistic state, and he, you know, in the end, finally becomes the Wendigo. I think that I'm... that storyline hmm. seems a lot more interesting than the follow-up rescuers who are, as a lot of people in this season, are brain dead and going out trying to find the kids. But because one, like, the, the intern basically dies in the whole thing, and he's, like, the first legitimate kill in this episode, it's like, oh, my God. I just... Uh... I will agree. It def I think a better structure for that story would be show most of the footage and then, like, right at the end, show a bunch of rescuers just getting mauled by Matthew or something like that. Mm -hmm. That definitely sounds like a good idea. In, in terms of them being brain dead, I mean, how do you react when you're fighting against something that is essentially interdimensional? Let's not get that twisted there. It yeah, but, I mean, but uh, what how I'm do you is... act rationally there? Yeah, but what I'm saying is. If you've been looking for your intern for, like, four hours, at that point, it would be smarter to back out for a second, call for help, because obviously you're not in range to call for backup, and very let true, them know, like, true. oh, hey, you know, there's something really fishy going on, especially when you found Vince chewed up, and you very clearly true, saw that true. it was not a bear attack, it was a human chewing on his leg. Agreed. Agreed. I will definitely admit that the story structure can be something that some people would be turned off by. Mm -hmm. But I will also say that, like, I don't think that stops it from being a well-rounded source of fear. Like, the whole episode is consistent in its fear. Whereas, again, I think Vampire has good moments, but yeah. good moments does not equal the whole episode. Well, I mean, the whole, like, the whole episode, like, at some point, you do need those, like, minor, like, little breathers. And that's what both episodes give. They do give a bit of a breather before the next scare, which I think, obviously, yeah, that's something you're going to need for any kind of horror flick or any kind of horror show to begin with. Yeah, you, you always need breaks. Yeah, I you just don't think always the overall... want the, the horror to be cranked up to 11. You, you can't 100%. do that. You always I have think to have, Wendigo like, these just... moments where it's calmed down a little bit. Agreed. I so. just think Wendigo has a consistent level of dread, as opposed to Vampire that has some moments, but then equally some moments that could easily take you out of it. Yeah. In my opinion. Um, I'm not sure if you had other stuff, though. And then the whole, like, the I mean, like, I got that the whole Wendigo episode in itself is, like, very iconic with its design, I'm not gonna lie, that's a kick-ass fucking design, and everyone who thinks what the Wendigo is basically points to the Lost Tapes version, instead of, like, the Native American uh, mythos of uh, Oh, totally. The and Wendigo. the art design, like, the 2D art specifically that they did, I don't know where they got that, but they have really made that iconic. Yeah, they I have made it stupidly were... iconic. I'm curious if they outsourced, or if they just, like, drew that for the episode, which, if it's the latter... Holy shit. Yeah. But then it but then again, like I said, like Vampire in itself, at the time, it's like this was the phase where Twilight was a thing and everyone was like not getting scared of vampires and it was like this phase like 
where, oh my god, he's so fucking hot and they're so sexy. It's like, what the I, fuck? So I, when, when you see that vampire, it's like, holy shit. I definitely can agree with that angle. I would somewhat make the argument that maybe they could have tried to make it a little bit more like the 2D design where it's a lot more hairless. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the design that they used in the final product is bad by any means. It's a very good design. It's one of the more iconic monsters of all three seasons. Yeah. I just do question why they didn't go with a hairless route because some people could argue, oh, it looks like something that they'd repurpose for Beast of Bray Road. <laughs> Even though the the one for Bray Road was just a Gillian suit. Oh, yeah, the Bray Road was oh my... not fantastic, but... <laughs> it's just a Gillian suit, and then, like, they had, like, the rubber mask that's, like, really fucked up and like that. I'm like, which, yeah, it's like, what the hell? But I, I, so you I will spend agree, all but... your budget on making Wendigo look good, but you can't, uh, or Yeti and all the other ones. But you couldn't make Beast of Bray Road look good. Like, really. Well, I mean, if they're going to pick one to look good, it might as well be Wendigo. <laughs> yeah. Well, Yeti's actually pretty good. Uh, well done, too. It's for decent. Design. So. Um, did you have any other points to make? Um, I'm trying to think. Um... I mean, other than that, I just... you know, You know how terrified I fucking get of this episode, because just... How ridiculously, you know, tense every scene is. It basically it, it's a lot higher than Death Raptor, where it's eerie. It's like on the actual scary kind of level. I ah, I see. Say. So you're somewhat following my method, where like I don't think Death Raptor is scary. I think Death Raptor is creepy. Oh yeah, I, Death I think Raptor is a similar Death, idea on that. Death Raptor is a hundred percent creepy, especially with its ending. But with Vampire, it's like. Death there, Raptor, but a lot more. There's 100 percent fear there. What? Like, there's a good level of fear there, as yeah. opposed to just like. Um, and something I note with this, and I think putting up a poll and bringing everybody else in here is a, definitely a smart idea. Is fear is subjective. What someone is afraid of is not necessarily something that can be 100 percent rated. So getting a group consensus, I think, is a really smart way of doing it. Yeah, because it's fair. Because. Your, you and I's definition of fear is, um, as the argument has gone on, is completely different. 100%. 100% different. So, that's why, that's why this year I had to bring an audience, uh, to do this. And so, obviously, like I said in the beginning of this, uh, discussion, with 77% of you two going for Wendigo, the, and the other 23% oh obviously going for Vampire. YouTube, let me just make this clear. If I win this debate, you and I, we're gonna have a serious talk. <laughs> YouTube, I support whatever decision you make, even if it's against my decision. I'm, I'm gonna take the route of being, like, the person who's okay with whatever the outcome is. Oh, because obviously, because it's your it's your monster who's fucking won the poll, so I mean... Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I respect all of your guys' choices for this matter, but it's just... Really? Why? <laughs> oh my god. Alright. And so, not only are we gonna add the YouTube vote, which already Solomon's winning that portion. So he's already got one vote in. I ha we have brought in our Lost Tapes crew to actually help vote, um, put their own opinions in and what their vote is. So I think, I feel like, should we let the floodgates open? I'd say just, like, do it one at a time and just let people... I I'm not sure if you're letting them speak their opinion or if you're just letting them say vote one way or the other, so... I'm, I, 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 literally, I, will... I literally said, like, you know, to them before this, it was like, just say what which one is scarier and why. Let's. Yeah, I'd say do that one at a time, and I, I think we should be good. I'm curious what everyone's gonna say and their opinions. All right, so Solomon, you pick. What do you want to go first? Uh, let's see. I normally go down the list, but I feel like if I did that, that'd be super rude. So I think we just kind of like pop back and forth as to which. I'm gonna start with Trike. Trike's right beneath me, so we'll, we'll start with him. Uh, but yeah, I'll just establish right off the gate. Vampire supporter. Yes. Mainly just because I think that one kind of aged better. Because after we're watching these episodes, 
I get the feeling that one kind of held itself back, mainly in the human part. Because mm-hmm. if you take a look at Wendigo, and like going back to what you said, Tom, and about like uh, getting into it, um, it's kind of difficult to really feel immersed when it when the people are really dumb with that being honest. Like I think in order to really establish horror, you need to have people that you can actually really connect or establish that. I just don't think when to go really dumb that much. So I believe your vote then is for vampire. Yes. Yeah. Actually, yes. I probably should say why. Like, I'm, like, well, yeah, like they definitely do have some of it uh, on the lesser side of the smart mode. They still at least have those like one in a life. I just think that kind of just got me. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I think what Trike was trying to say is, like, you know, it does have its smarter moments, like, for Wendigo, but it also has its dumber moments. I, I can respect that. And that, you know, Vampire has just aged a little bit better than Wendigo has, in terms of its I, I can see an argument for that. Mm-hmm. And, right, uh, I'll, and I... I'll actually speak on Canada's part, even though I don't know why it... Well, I can have somewhat of a reason why uh, he says this, but he chose Wendigo. Okay. Um, simply because, you know, he's more uncomfortable in the fact that, you know, if you go out in the woods, like you said, Solomon, if you went out in the woods and you were you were dealt with, a, you know, a cannibal who could basically blink to your location, that's a little bit more horrifying than being in a cramped little house and, you know, having to fend yourself against, like, uh, werewolf-looking motherfuckers. As he, as that, he would like to say. That sounds like uh, an answer Canada would give. I also feel like he would add to that argument of, like, in terms of who you can shoot and kill, I feel like there's a clear person that can take a bullet better than the other. <laughs> what? The Wendigo can take a be- a t- uh, cannot take a bullet? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh I, I think God. if I shot the Wendigo, it would not go well. If I shot a vampire, I think there's a chance there'd be a lot of blood. It wouldn't all be its blood, but, like, you know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That, I'm just trying to get into Canada's mindset, though. Canada, yeah. if, I've, if I've misconstrued your mindset, that's my bad. <laughs> yeah. So one each. Uh, I feel like you have the right to pick the next person. Okay, so I'm going to try Maxis instead. Hello? Hello! Right. So I think that both of you make um, pretty fair arguments. Mm-hmm. And what um, what Solomon said earlier were um, what counts as scary is very subjective. And I 100% agree with that. So, like, if you were to watch, you know, all these episodes like today, like a decade later after you first watched them when you um, when we were kids, all of them are, you know, kind of corny. And, you know, you can deconstruct them to their basic levels and say like oh this is bad this is bad the camera work the acting the costumes but when you're a kid you're not even thinking about that you're just you're just watching the horror in front of you and what uh i'll say my vote for vampire is is what i'll start out with because it kind of more hits closer to home with you when you're watching this as a kid as as the main character in vampire being a kid right and the scene that got me really scared of this episode was the scene where the where he was lying in bed and the vampire was creeping up on him and you can see the arms on his bed and that will really get close to home with me because everyone can imagine themselves being in their bed at night and maybe hearing like a a shoe fall on your closet or whatever then you look up and your closet door is cracked open and you're just thinking about that episode you watched earlier in the night and that just gets to you right so that's why I want to vote for Vampire. All right. Solid argument. So, tied again. Uh, Solomon, it's your pick. Let's see. Uh, mm, tough choice. I'm going to go with B-Man. Hey. All right. Um... So, actually, I took the liberty to watch these while I was at work, both episodes. Nice. And, um, now, my original choice was Vampire, because 
this was like I hadn't watched them in years, and I remember the vampire episode a lot for traumatizing my little ass when I was a kid. Um, Join the club. Every everybody's traumatized by this show. One I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but as I watched them, and I kind of more or less compared them, I uh, have to say that. Watching them now, I kind of enjoyed Wendigo a bit more, as I just generally now lean more to the aspect of, uh, you know, folklore stuff. I like folklore stuff. But okay. I still have to go with Vampire, because one thing that always interested me with the Vampire episode was I like the idea of fear in a place where you feel safe. And when the Vampire's in your damn home, uh, you know... That place that's safe ain't normally safe anymore, you know? Yeah. Shit so just gets like, real, basically. It, it it ties into a lot of aspects I like with cosmic horror, and though that's not a cosmic horror thing, it just, that's something I lean heavier towards than folklore. And so I still have to go with vampires simply because the idea of being no longer safe in your own home, which is supposed to be safe, it terrifies the ever-loving shit out of me. Oh my gosh. Respect. Respect the choice. Yeah, but still respect on the fact that you enjoy Wendigo still. Oh yeah, Wendigo's still a perfect ep- like, not perfect, it has its flaws, but it's still a really good episode. I liked it a lot. Agreed. Alright, um, I'm gonna go with Rotting next. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I mean, of course, me and B-Man, we've, of course, we've of course talked about this, some of our points are mostly the same. And I am just gonna kind of reiterate, like what he said. Yes, um, I think Vampire does um, is like in its own right how it works, and being that, yeah, your your the horror is coming from stuff that you should feel safe. That being your house. At the same time, I heavily agree. The woods is equally as scary, especially you know the woods at night or and when you're in danger. Um, a place that looks inviting or that feels uh, that can be familiar takes on a whole new image when shit hits the fan. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, and as for the overall the whole horror thing, my biggest problem with Wendigo was that it showed up too much. And that's more of a personal thing because I'm all I'm all for not seeing the monster until the very end because not seeing it. But at least knowing it's there builds more suspense and in some ways lots of tension, which I think Vampire did that just fine. Wendigo, on the other hand, kind of got into the action pretty dang quickly. And I will also kind of reiterate what uh, Smog said about the recovered footage being a better story, which I think they should have went with. Because like what Solomon said, that goes into, the, that goes into a psychological horror element. Um, that specifically being that your fellow man or your your hum or your friend or your loved one has now just uh, become an unrecognizable monster in dire circumstances when stakes are really high. Yeah. Um. What else to say? Uh. Also. Um. Also, being like with Wendigo, I would say I had a huge problem with just about every um every kill was set up the same way. Mostly people finding uh like they find the stuff hung from the tree. And there's the dramatic uh, violin sound effect, and then the Wendigo appears. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's true. Especially when every vampire kill, at least, I mean, it was, it was still like ripping their throats out, but you know, it's at least done a little differently from the two deaths the, in that episode. You mean the one kill that we actually saw, and the other one that we only heard was drained of blood. Well, I mean, well, I mean, when Wendigo has a higher body count, it's it's easier to say that Vampire is more unique when it's only got like one that's actually on screen. Well, oh, there's yeah, technically but... two on screen because if you look go back to where the food mart is, and you pay well, yeah, but we don't scene, really you see the vampire literally physically rip this guy's throat out and drag him off screen. I mean, we and don't see him drag; well we just see him get mauled. You can see it through the shaky cam. Oh, I can definitely see the exterminators. Uh, but with every Windigo kill, it's just, it shows up with the hatchet in hand and just goes hack. Like it's fucking J- like it's- like it's Jason showing up and just going with the machete. Right. Um, what are they saying? Uh, hold on, I'm trying to find where I was- where my train of thought of. 
Sorry. Uh, you were mentioning the way that the Wendigo killed people and how it was very repetitive. Yes, I did have a problem with it being repetitive a little bit. And um, as for kind of addressing the whole why didn't the cam why didn't the parents check the camera thing, chances are really if they were so convinced that he had a bad dream or that and they're scratching his ear as raccoons, you can argue that they see no reason because they believe that their that their reason is is the reason. There's no reason to validate. But I can also I can really agree with your criticism that if the kid did catch the uh or moving on camera, he could have definitely shown that. Yeah. Um. What else? Oh, uh, I guess uh, I can say like one of my biggest thing of vampire is how the uh, I guess like all the scares they start off like they're very small, starting from the like the small scratches and the door, and then they kind of pick up with the uh, with you know, crawling on, crawling into the kid's bedroom at night and grabbing his toy, and then, uh, what I, uh, what really makes this vampire stick with me most is the fact that when the, uh, when the, when the latter act happens, or not act, but you know, latter sequence happens, when the vampire finally reveals itself and they try to ambush the kid, um, I just really love how the music just starts right like right at the initial um reveal it just starts there and it does not let go until the very end when they uh when the father stabs it and then they're all and they're all okay yeah well i mean it slows down just a little bit um when mostly, they go up the mo stair slows, it mostly slows down at the like when it's at the it kind of slows down at the point when the child is holding the door shut yeah, but well, then, when the wife but, is holding, but it does, but it does is holding but it down still, the door, and then the dad comes in and he's like, "No, it's me, it's me." I was talking about like, um, like in the base, like the basement door. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that too. Yeah, like, I, like that kind of, it kind of does almost like, I wouldn't say pause because the music is still going and right. you know there's like, like the emotions are still high. But then it just like it's just like a brief moment of like you know of them of them trying to restrain the. Uh, the threat until it, you know, finally breaks the door off. Right. Um, and I was trying to think back to about to Wendigo and stuff. Um, of course, yeah, like I just said, Wendigo didn't really have that kind of moment. Except where the end, it kind of had a, had a pseudo thing like that. Especially after they found, uh, especially like when, um, long after they found, uh, Lane Corey. Especially um, when Lane Corey, like, even towards the end of that episode, I will have to say, she kind of just gives up. I mean, that could be fine. I mean, there's, I mean, I always do appreciate the whole, you know, the hopeless, the kind of hopeless ending mm -hmm. kind of deal, which is the kind of, is also something I do give Wendigo above Vampire. I do like a more, a hopeless ending where everyone dies rather than a more triumphant ending where people make it out. Yeah. Um... And as design-wise, again, I can't deny Wendigo looks awesome. Mm -hmm. I would have still loved a more folklore-accurate design. Um, I still think That's it would have been... completely fair. Yeah, I still would have even... i just love to see um, just the character not just looking more... Like, I know it probably wouldn't uh, do well with, like, TV sensors to have him just being completely, like, nude, but, like, ins like, insanely gaunt and taller than he was when we last saw him. Because I think that's also another thing that about uh about like both vampires and Wendigos both have is that they is that they're very monstrous and evil looking, but they start out as people, and it just and it's and it's uh, almost uh I don't know what to call it, but or to find the right word for it, it's a little shocking to think that this a looking creature was one of you at some point. Yeah. And as for the hair thing, again. I'm totally again. I love the uh, vampire's design, not just because it's a deviation from the whole, uh, from the really good-looking, smooth skin, smooth shiny skin design, mm. but because it is just like. But even of the more uglier designs, it's really it kind of has a thing on those because it's more, definitely more animalistic, and all the hair, being from you know they're not well kept, they're not clean shaven, so all their body hair is just growing out. 
And yeah, I can get why some people think they look more like a werewolf, but I can't say that. Um, I don't know. I don't consider that a fair criticism. Uh, my my argument with that is I would have liked if they were more connected to the 2D design that we have in the promotional material for that episode. And I believe they show it within the episode. It's got a more... Yeah, I, I will agree. Like, yeah. like the, uh, yeah. the the drawings they show are more hairless. That That is my only criticism with that. I am still very okay with the design. I just would have liked a little more connection there. Yeah. And but again, we had, like, um, we... I, I don't mean to bring this one up, but we did have, like, Thunderbird, where the image was completely fucking different because it was a I don't know what Thunderbird but then was in doing the episode there. it's more meant to be it's bird or condor like form well what uh, I know Thunderbird they kind of went between different like images they had the condor look they had an eagle look and then they had a damn pterosaur look oh my god um but back to the topic um I'm trying to think if there was anything more I had to say there I mean, you said a lot, so... I did, but I'm trying to think if I got if I got everything, or make, just trying to make sure I didn't leave anything out. Okay. Um... I guess also, like, one one thing I could also talk, um, say is that how they bring up the Wendigo can travel through time and space, which is, I guess, a fancier way of saying teleport to its victims. Um... And, like, someone brings up how it kind of looked like it does that a couple of times, but then I kind of wonder why didn't it do that to Len Corey in the cave? Especially if this whole, like, if the creature is said to have, to still have the memories of the, uh, of the human or something. I mean, I could probably defend Solomon's case in that maybe it was Matthew playing a psychological game with, uh, Lane, because when they talked earlier back in the past, like, he was, like, trying to prove, like, his point. Like, you'll wait and see. Yeah, but that is a bit of a stretch. Yeah, it's a bit of a stretch, but... I, my idea is he's just screwing with them because he knows he's gonna win. <laughs> mm. That's my only other take on that. But I think I think Smog's got something, but I can also see how that could be a stretch. Yeah. Uh, I guess my question is what your vote is for. Um, yeah, I was gonna... Kind of get to that again. Trying to again, trying to think if there's anything else I can say. So yeah. again, just, uh, I had all this in my mind, but then it just goes away as I'm trying to think. Well, I guess I can say that's about all I've got. And yeah, my vote, I'd say, of course, being the whole. Oh, I guess I can also address the whole fear is subjective kind of thing. Yeah, sure, fear is subjective, but what I do like about both these episodes is that they kind of portray fears that nobody grows out of. No one grows out of being attacked in their home, attacked in their sleep, or attacked in an environment where they don't live in, um, or attacked by their fellow man. Agreed. Nobody grows Agreed. out of that. And no one grows out of that. But can't say I was personally scared by any of them. Uh, I just mostly, I just appreciate them for just what they do with their material and how they handle it. Which is why, although I can say they both handle it really well, they have their pros and they both have their cons, mm -hmm. but if I had to really choose anything, I'm definitely giving my vote to Vampire. Alright. Alright, so I, I think it's your pick next. Let's see, I think uh, Krieg is still busy, so I'll go with Redhead for now. Yep, go for Ginger King. Well, 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 gentlemen, this is certainly a debate that um, really got us thinking. Yep. <laughs> I have it going back and forth with this one. Now, I'm going to put my personal bias aside, considering, yes, Vampire is the first ever ep episode I watched of this glorious season. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, not a pretty one to start off with, to say the least, because Jesus H. Christ Almighty, that thing is horrifying. Yep. I want to get my cons of both episodes out of the way first. Okay. Vampire is very minimal. I, va Vampire is very minimal. The whole, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you guys here, the whole videotape, video camera subplot kind of goes nowhere. They just kind of just do it just to get out of the way. I felt they could have done a little bit more with that. The other thing, uh, Solomon, you did bring up that, well, if the vampire was on, you know, was in the kid's bedroom, why couldn't he pounce on him? 
why didn't they do that when they attacked the exterminator and the exterminator cried for help why were, were they near him because i thought they were working like literally in the living room when the dude was in the basement that 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 mm. kind of didn't make sense to me unless they were on they were like upstairs but even then you probably still could have heard them it seemed like and, from, it seemed like from the cutaway it seemed like they were in the attic maybe question mark? at the bare minimum it seems like they were causing like destruction to the house in terms of like breaking stuff i am very willing to dis defend smog's episode here and say i'm willing to suspend my disbelief in saying that maybe they didn't hear him because they were somewhere else or they just didn't hear him mm -hmm. yeah i'm probably. very willing and, to agree with that though i see your point another <laughs> thing that i kind that kind of rubbed me a little in the wrong way is that the dad kind of came off a bit dickish in a way because okay think about it yeah why couldn't they just roll the video video footage and you know look oh wait there's actually something in this house that's actually causing this kid to you know basically shit his pants why did it, oh, the dad's like oh wait it was just a bad dream you know all this stuff yada yada he's kind of like disowning the fact that oh it was just a bad dream yeah okay that part, that part kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And he sends the kid down into the basement where we just saw the exterminator get killed. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't he go down there with them? Uh, my my thing to piggyback off that, if the dad wanted to prove his point that it was just a bad dream, don't you think he could, I don't know, look at the camera to prove that he was right? Exactly. Why couldn't they just true. do that? And then... But and then I, I hate to bring up another show in 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 this case, uh, The Haunted, which is another Animal Planet show. A lot of people, when they experience, like, the paranormal, like, their first instinct, usually, is they don't believe it. Like, they're trying mm -hmm. to, like, block it out of their minds, like, okay, there's nothing wrong with this place. Besides, like, other than the fact that, like, one or maybe the entire house, like, agrees that something is up. There's always one person that's just gonna stretch their disbelief and not believe it. Yeah, I, I that that part just kind of didn't make sense. Um, besides that, I don't really have any other big problems with it. Wendigo, though, the minor, main, not minor, the minor gripe I have with it. Why are the park rangers such idiots? Why is the rescue team such morons? And that goes for all of season three, by the way. Mm. <laughs> I'm just saying, season three, they did not pick the brightest characters, because at least for the first two seasons, they had some smart characters, I guess you could say. Yeah. Ever, oh my god, trying to pick which one was the smartest out of all, like, all of season three, and you're literally trying to find a, like, a gold ring in a pile of shit. Like, you, you you gotta go through all of that just to find the, go, the Willy Wonka's golden ticket, but... Although, I will admit that this <sighs> is the golden ring in the pile of shit, is the Wendigo. Uh, ring, so. Well, yeah. I mean, for all how bad season three is, there's a couple decent moments, but... This... Okay, you again, the whole found footage thing, that should have been the entire story, because the main story... They... That... that made me feel stupid mm -hmm. so okay you send the new guy to go get water if he's gone for a certain amount of time would you fully expect him to be alive uh, no no his ass dead be oh my god that was so incredibly stupid and that kind of took me out of it a little bit two when they go into the cave you can clearly hear that they uh, incorporated the cave demons yes noises. Yes, I I get pissed off every time that sound effect is in because I'm like, holy shit, we're gonna have two cryptids in the same episode. What the fuck? And then it's Watch just out, guys, it's a cryptid to be death file. And I'm like, damn it. And also, another thing, the Wendigo design, I love it. Don't get me wrong. Why is it showing up like almost every five minutes? This, like, that episode gave me flashbacks to Sinister 2. Whereas the first one, it builds up suspense and whenever Bagul, the mo the villain in that movie, shows up, it makes an impact. 
Whereas the second movie, he shows up like every 10 minutes and has to deal with annoying ass children. But at least this episode didn't have annoying ass children, it just had stupid park rangers. The point is, is that the thing constantly shows up. And that kind of bugged me a little bit, but at the same time, it didn't bother me. And that's mainly it. I think, to me, Wendigo is a flawed masterpiece. But I wouldn't say it's the scariest in terms of a couple things. One, it's not an isolated location. I think the vampire house and isolated location is far more terrifying because we're in the woods, you could just roam around and all that shit and you can, you know, kind of lose the thing. Whereas vampire, you know, maybe the, you forgot to open the doors or the doors are locked and you're kind of, you know, butt fucked. Yeah. Another thing too, I don't think Wendigo has that much suspense until the creature actually shows up. Whereas vampire, you have this overwhelming premise of just feeling you're like you're being watched. And that's the big thing that stood out to me when watching both of these episodes. Whereas Wendigo it's just like, oh, okay, this guy just really murders people with an axe. Okay, it's like a typical slasher villain. Yeah. Whereas Vampire, it builds suspense. And it doesn't, like, rely on cheap jump scares. The the, the and another thing too, I think vampires got more memorable scenes. Like when the thing first shows up in that kid's room, that is pure nightmare fuel. Yeah. That feeds my sleep paralysis demon in my head for rent free. Oh my god in hell! Mm -hmm. Terrifying. Mm -hmm. Every time the thing shows up, pisses your pants scary. And another thing, so many you did bring in, like they felt like they wished they could have shown it. I actually kind of like the way that it was shaky cam because, yeah, the thing looks kind of cheap and silly. Like, it looks like a rabid lion, for God's sake. I like the way that they shake the thing so much, but then make it too shaky to the point where you're about to lose your head, you're about to throw up or feel nauseated. They did it to a point where, okay, these things are, you know, these things are freaky as hell. Yeah. Uh, and I my... do like the ending to Vampire a little bit more because you want this family to win because these things are just attacking you. Whereas Wendigo, it's just like, we had to deal with so many dumbass characters to a point where I don't care who wins. We had to deal with Dumb Dumb and Doofus over here. Why, why should I care if they win? And plus the main girl, who, by the way, that's the thing I forgot to, uh, I forgot to mention in my cons, why didn't you listen to the survivor chick? She was there when she witnessed it. Fair. God, Jesus. No, no, just stay here, just here. I hate that trope. We were watching uh, Thunderbird earlier, and that that one scene where Cole gets scared and he breaks his leg, they left him in the ditch. Why? Why? Uh, I mean, I mean, because to be fair, a legitimately, like, to be fair, legitimately, a lot of the, a lot of Lost Tapes episodes rely on that trope right towards the end. Oh Gold my Demon god, has that's it, that's and a lot of other ones too. But I think Solomon also had a point. Yeah, Thunderbird, um, Dover Demon did that too. I'm just like, dude, why? At least Cave Demons. The point is, leave no man behind. Do that more! God, that, 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 I'm sorry to go on a rant, but that trope really bugs me, and it really just aggravates the hell of me. Yeah. Uh, to the clarify my point on the uh, costumes, I just find the shaky cam very annoying, because I think the costumes are really good, and I would like to see them, and the people acting in them, because it looks good. Yeah, but... Yeah, no. it does, even though it looks like... it looks, They kind of look a little apish. And that's fine. Like, it's a unique design. Yeah, and then for for Wendigo especially, he gets like really close up to the cabinet, and especially uh, towards the end where it's um, the female uh, the female rain, uh, rescuer who's getting attacked. Like we have this cool like camera shot that's above, seen before, 
But then when the Wendigo shows up, you see that shaky cam where he's literally grabbing the cam, but then you have a much better view from the upper camera view, which is like, why couldn't we have moments that are more clear like that cam instead of the shaky shit that every human actor has to do? You know? Yeah, in that camera shot, I... Smile, you're gonna hate me for ringing this up. That reminded me of the overhead shot of Monster Monterey Bay, where you can like see the thing kind of like coming towards. I know you were seating at the moment right now. But that kind of reminded me of like that. I'm like, okay, that's a bit interesting, but unlike Monster Monterey Bay, Wendigo isn't boring as hell. Yeah, it's just the fact a vampire gets everything right. The setting, the atmosphere, the atmosphere never lets up. The tension. Oh my good lord. Mm -hmm. The scary scenes are terrifying. The costume designs are cool. Kid, The kid's acting was a bit iffy, but to be fair, he was probably the best kid actor they ever got. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe that, the New Jersey Devil Sisters, which, yeah, I could take that as well. But you can actually feel fear in that kid's voice because... You, you can actually feel fear. And that is, you know, horrifying. You know, it's just... It, it's just... Yeah, and, and legitimately, it's, like, hard for, ch for, for kids' actors to, like, do the things that you want them to do. But when they actually pull them off, like, the, this kid here, it's like, Jesus Christ... And also, and also another thing, Solomon, where you said that why didn't, uh, you know, this vampire just pounce on the kid while he was asleep. I think they wanted, they didn't want to do that and risk it because they didn't want to do that for shock value. I think that's why they did it. Because take a, take a AV, Alien vs. Predator Requiem where they were just killing off babies left, right, and center because they did it for edginess. They didn't want to do that. Because mm -hmm. they don't want to basically, you know, they don't want to say, no, no, we ain't going to kill a kid off. We're just going to, you know, steal something so that way he has more fear and yeah. all that stuff. They didn't want to do that. Now, you could say, for example, well, Jaws did that too, but at least they had a plot and had a reason to do that. Because you're out in the water and a giant ass shark's attacking. It could happen to anyone. Basically, the uh, the vampires learn from Pennywise, but they're much better at doing it. Yeah, that's true, too. Point is, if you have a reason as to why you're doing it, it better be a valid reason, because if it's not, then, oh boy, you're going to get a lot of backlash for that. Yeah. I will also say that the facts and the imagery for vampire, horrifying imagery. Oh my god, the images there are are terrifying. Wendigo, Wendigo is, I think, just cool imagery. I think it all looks cool. It doesn't look, you know, just like, oh my god, that's actually kind of freaky. Yeah. Yeah, like with Rotting said, that they should have used, like, the images that they use for, you know, the facts, because the actual Wendigo itself, it's like a, like, bulkier, basically. It's, a, it's like a big, big, big behemoth. Whereas the one to go in this one, oh, it's just like a skinny ass dude just slaying people with an axe. That's about it. Yeah. I think the imagery in Vampire is more terrifying. And just the music itself is just godly, just wow. Oh my god. Uh, the music is just. I, I, I can't. I can't. That music, just, ugh, it irks me all the time. Or, or, it doesn't irk me. It just, ugh, it gets under my skin. Mm -hmm. So, point being, no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to ask uh, what your vote was for. <laughs> I was getting ready to go to it. I'm, Vampire, for me, um, is one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen. And it's going to live in my head rent free because I'm not allowed to have I'm not allowed to have nice things. And I've been watching scary stuff ever since I was seven. And yeah. this is probably ranks up there as one of the most terrifying. Is it perfect? Not necessarily, but I think it's a masterpiece of just disturbingness to say the yeah. least. So I'm not bashing Wendigo. I'm not saying it's shit. I don't think it's terrible. 
No. It's a flawed ma- it's a flawed masterpiece in its own right. Mm. I just think Wendigo has a or Vampire has a better setting, a better you know style, a little bit better atmosphere. I think has a better overall creature. So that is why I pick Vampire in my personal opinion. Okay. All right. So well, I'm gonna try Craig God one more time. Well, um, while you're doing that, can I take this time to actually say something? Yeah, sure. I would like to kind of make a bit of a counter-argument to Redhead saying the woods is not an isolating environment. It definitely is. Mostly by definition, being that you're away from every from a familiar away from everything familiar. Mm-hmm. It's isol. It is isolating. It's definitely isolated, but it's also isolating as well. And like I said, especially at night or when shit hits the fan and you're in danger, the woods kind of take on a different image. However, the house, a more fitting term, it's claustrophobic. It's You're, you're confined within the walls and the hallways. You yeah. can't run away. That's just something I just really wanted to say. And as and back to the... Uh, and also, I wanted to address the why the uh, vampire didn't attack the kid in, in his bed. I've just I've noticed and this one I forgot to mention I noticed in Vampire most of the attacks they were all ambush attacks in the beginning, and even the exterminator though you can also chalk that up to like when um it found that that he had kind of gone into their nest and it was more of a territorial thing but then even when the kid comes back it's still an ambush mm-hmm. and so the uh, the bed scene um. The kid, like, it literally just it just grabbed the, the doll uh, just to inspect, probably just to inspect what it was, and then that's when the kids saw it, and so it realized it was seen, and which is, this is common, of course, of especially ambush predators, when they have lost the element of surprise, they'll, like, they'll, like, they'll stop, or they'll freeze, or they'll flee until they get the right chance. Yeah, but then that makes me question about the final attack, then, like, then why did, like, two or three vampires then all of a sudden just come in and just start attacking the whole family then. Because they were working together, but that's just something I wanted to say. I wanted to just, you know, talk about the, not to address the, why the vampire didn't attack, but also address the whole, you know, woods aren't isolating uh, thing. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Krieg, what you got? My personal opinion on the two episodes between Vampire and Wendigo. Yep. All right. And which one do you like more? Or which one you vote for is scarier. This was this extremely difficult because considering the two episodes are well both like some of the best and um have really, really good premises. Yeah. Um I had to really think it over the whole day and I'm going with Wendigo. Okay. Mostly because the Wendigo, I think it's because like um it, just being in the woods and knowing that thing will pop up anywhere at any time. I think it's just because that's just, I guess, more terrifying to me. And also to the fact that this was once a human being, but was um, tempted by cannibalism and just turned into this creature that is just mauling his own friends or whatever. Hmm. So there's something about cannibalism that's just like you know just disgusting and just just gets under my skin about that. Yeah. Vampire though, I'm not gonna lie, it's also good. Mm-hmm. Both, um, in fact, actually, both Vampire and Wendigo, both of their um, designs for the creatures are actually pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. For the vampire, you know, you know, they look more werewolf-like, but it actually works for this episode because they're they're supposed to be like these really um disturbing creatures that you never expect to see, especially in the walls of a house. Yeah. That's something I actually like about the vampire episode. Um something with the Wendigo I, I actually thought was more better was also actually the tapes that showed what happened before mm-hmm. and how it slowly built up. It built up to the um, events of what happened to the guy and just exactly <laughs> what he did and what he did to his own friends that made him more horrifying. Mm-hmm. The moment 
um, you see that it's like nearly two weeks, and he's literally eating one of the people at night, and just gets up and just growls at um, one of the girls. That one was that scene was pretty damn horrifying. Yeah, like when you first see the the him Matthew like actually transform into the Wendigo as he's eating April, it's like holy god shit. I mean, I wish they just didn't cut like right when his face got exposed. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a thing, and I think Solomon might agree on that that point. I'm fifty fifty on it. I am okay with how the story played out. I agree that it can be interpreted a couple of ways, and you could probably change it a couple of ways mm -hmm. but I am okay with how the story turned out as a whole All right. so Krieg what's your vote I'm still going when to go okay. the thing is um, don't get me wrong vampire is scary mm -hmm. and when I watched this show as a kid I, I thought it was one of the most horrifying things I ever saw but then when season 3 came out and he played the Wendigo I just couldn't believe what I was just seeing with my own eyes. Yeah. And I actually, the thing is, um, I actually watched this whole show with my family, and they even agree that the Wendigo is just something that just scared them, and something they would never want to ever see in their lives. Yeah. All right, I believe that's everyone. Alright, I mean, unless somebody wants any more final thoughts that they want to add, speak I now mean, forever hold your peace. I no, would like to say one last thing, honestly. Mainly just since, uh, Rotting and, uh, Ginger got to talk for a long while, I kind of want to add one last thing. Yeah, okay. Um, I felt like there was one thing that did also kind of detract from the whole idea of human to to go. Mainly being how they handled the ending. Since they always go on about how it's a bear that ate them. Which, I feel like it's stupid. Like, I mean, come on, it's literal axe So I feel like, I don't know, I think it would have worked better if they actually went with the idea that they maybe arrested him or something. Maybe actually convicted him. I think that would better underline how, you know, a person did this, not an animal. Well, it, oh, it's well, not a person it. that did this. Yeah. He's not human anymore. Yeah, he's I not know. human anymore. <laughs> yeah, but it does leave, like, this opening, like, where it's, like, there's no justice, really. And, you know, again, it's blamed on for a stupid fucking reason why, yeah. you know, the rescuers all died. Like, I think they would have had bear spray, at least. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. And then with Vampire, it's a little more open as well, where, you know, you had the family, like, kill one of them off, but then, like, several months later, there's still another vampire attack uh, a little bit further away from their house. So, it's... it. Both, both of them have, like, an open-ended ending as to what happened, but I feel like Vampire, it's a little bit more, like, you know, a little more terrifying that there's... Like, it's still more attacks going on, and that a lot of people are going back to, well, the Redding case, is what they're calling it. I, I am definitely- oh wait, no. Trike, you finish your thing. My bad. Yeah, thank you. I will admit, though, I never really saw either of them as really supernatural, either. Mm -hmm. And, like, I know they talk about supposedly teleporting, but was there really any time it wasn't at the Met? Like, was there? Mm, no. So, like, it's not, it's like, it's kind of something they just say. It's not really put to the test. I don't know, I don't really feel like it's supernatural, more so just biological than anything. I think you yeah. really kill Ibrahim. And, yeah, I'll be get you to be. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Go in there and be self. Yeet. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments? Um, I guess I was also going to make a comment mostly pertaining to um, thinking back to Junior King's uh, thing about killing off a child, uh, something I kind of forgot in my previous statement. 
is that you don't really need a reason to kill a child. You don't really need a reason to kill an adult either. But I just think killing a child for shock is one thing, but I think just like any death in any horror um, show or movie, the death should probably be important in some way, whether it be like kickstarting, like kickstarting, you know, not, not, well, not kickstarting the plot, but as well as, but more like just kind of like reinforcing the threat like when he brought up Jaws, that's a pretty good example because okay. there was already the um, the fear of a possible shark incident after the opening scene, and so thought and so thus the main character was cautious at that point. And then when Alex Kidner is killed on is killed on the raft, um, that for that again reinforced his um, his fears and his suspicions and why he further pushed the whole close of the beaches thing. Yeah. Um, other than that, then I guess to the supernatural elements, um, just pertaining to like what Trike said, um, I just, I just really like how as although vampires and Wendigo are without a doubt very supernatural creatures, it kept them both very grounded and kept the supernatural aspect to a minimum. With Wendigo, it was mostly just yeah, we didn't explicitly see the whole moving through time and space thing, but we did see the voice mimicry, which was good enough. And the I fact, really and, and the fact that, that yeah, and the fact that it's already unnatural enough that in a span of like hours or days, a, um, a normal human grows claws and sharp and razor sharp teeth. Yeah. As vampire, the whole human aspect is never explored. In fact, that's another thing I like of it is that. It's completely ambiguous if these things were, like, who these thing, who these things were in life, if they were anything in life, and as far as what their, as far as abilities, it just seems like the most it did was gave them, you know, gave them again fangs and made their nose more, uh, more like, more like bat-like, like a flat nose, and uh, I guess, I guess there was kind of something there, like in the bed room scene how the camera was glitching out and it seemed to disappear between frame to frame like so like it has an interference on elect an electrical equipment but that's not further explored and it doesn't happen in you know the other sequences but because i can say that's i guess a gripe i do have that did more or less seem like the thing that they kind of did in season three a lot when the creatures on the screen they throw in that glitchy camera effect to hide it But at least in that scene, it looked cool. All right. Um, anyone else? Anyone anything else before else? I reveal who won? I would just like to say that I think everyone here had very fair and well thought out arguments, and I think this was a really good debate. Agreed. I agree. Because let because let's about- be let's be honest, like. Solomon, I'm gonna say this. I still respect Wendigo as an episode because as a kid, it was horrifying to me. But as an adult, now not so much. <laughs> but I still definitely respect your hell and where you stand at. But go ahead. As Dio. I respect yours. Go ahead, Dio. I know you were gonna say something. I'm not gonna lie, it's okay. I I legit just fucking forgot. I'm sorry. No, oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right, Ginger. You know what? Not gonna lie. I'm gonna have to watch Solomon's uh, top fifteen scariest uh, Lost Tapes episodes in the re-ranking after this. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I appreciate right. that. The more views, the more money. Yeah, Good basically, time. go go sub to Solomon too. Seriously. He needs it. (laughs) Because for this year, um, despite the fact that, yeah, we're missing a few members tonight, I think think the only other big player tonight that we missed is is, uh, B-Rad. But I don't think it's really going to change all that much in the votes. Because Wendigo got three, especially with the the YouTube... um, with the YouTube section going crazy over that. And then Vampire did, unfortunately, get five. So, give him that crown. <laughs> oh my god, that was wrong. <laughs> ah!
Vigo! Help me! You have been so kind to me, Doctor. Caring, thoughtful, but he pays me. Stay back! You can't kill me. I'm already dead. I'm just going to say, you and your YouTube audience probably need to have a discussion then. Oh yeah, we're going to definitely have a talk. Yeah, you fucked up, boys. You definitely fucked up. Not not you guys, not you guys on the last tape server. You were fucking great. But my YouTube audience, we're going to definitely have a talk. Yeah, that, that was, was almost, cool. what, 80 votes? Yeah, that was like 80% was like Wendigo. I'm like, the fuck is this? Interesting. Yeah, you're like, really trying to play me down? Saying, um, you think you're probably going to get a lot of people just saying, like, they're both good in their own right, or why does this even matter, you know? Yeah, I know a lot of people, even in the comment section for that uh, poll, were like, both episodes are really good, and it's like... Yeah, I know, it's a tough decision. <laughs> it really is. I mean, this is really just a thing between you and him. There's mm. clearly going to be a lot of people who could care le who couldn't care less. Well, the whole point of the video is to just mess around. Yep, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. You know, for the lols. And so now I have the crown for uh, this year. So, yes. Um, which means we're at a, a, an impasse. Because we're tied on both our arguments. I'm sure we'll find something to disagree so, on. <laughs> I I feel like you should be the one who thinks of the next debate. Oh, I can totally spend time thinking about that. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, because it's like Monster Monterey Bay, we did the scariest episode. Which one, which thing do we want to discuss next? Well, oh, see... God, I got Zilbert by a lot <laughs> That's not fair. I don't oh, know. That's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> I will keep that a complete mystery until I privately message you, and then eventually we just build up the hype, and then we'll figure it out. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, okay. And as always, everybody who's watching this video, okay, first of all, please go to sub Solomon Pleasant. He does amazing content on his own. Um, as, as well as me, I do my own good content, but besides the point, he's the future guest here, so. <laughs> Thank you for shouting me out, I greatly yep. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And so, yep, thank you to all the Lost Tapes crew members for at least helping us out, figuring out who was going to win this one, so. Just say, um, bye boys one more time. Everyone just unmute yourselves. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> Adios. Sayonara. But yep. Mom, if you're watching Ciao. this, I made it. <laughs> you were in the original podcast, Ginger, so it's fine. She wasn't impressed. She didn't like the audio. Uh, <laughs> Alright, but still. You know, if you guys enjoyed the debate, you know, leave a comment. Tell me what you guys you know, thought, like, did you agree with our choice uh, for this year? And, you know, just debate down below, but be nice. I will be hunting you down if you say anything bad about either episode. I'm just saying. You know, but, you could interpret this as, I'll hunt you down if you say something bad about Vampire. I no, don't no, know. I'm not gonna do that. I'll, I'll still Seems like your YouTube audience is pretty that. clear I'm on the winner. Here. That'll be, that, that'll be a yep. different place at a different time, okay? I will rip people um, <laughs> in a different comment section later on. But, yeah. You know, feel free to comment down below, like the video, and subscribe to me and Solomon. Seriously, please. Just fucking do that, please. And until next time, boys, we'll see you all next year.